And joining me today is the principal of Rosemont Stud and Anthony Mithin. G'day, Anthony. How are you? Great, Ben. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Obviously a busy time at the moment, getting ready for the Magic Millions Gold Coast Ewing sale. Yeah, forgive me for uh, being on the move while we're uh, recording this chat. I'm uh, in, between, in between farms at the moment. We've had a, a, a significant arrival at the stud farm um, this morning with uh, the mother of Sneaky Five, who we bought last week. I'm, I'm pretty keen to get over there and uh, she's in. So, um, yeah, the road might not worry. As, uh, as you say, a busy time of the year with uh, 22 yearlings in prep mode for uh, Magic Millions and already started parades. We've had quite a few parades for those and uh, the last of our foals born on the weekend. So, um, yeah, there's plenty plenty going on. You had a career in media for a long time, working across print, television and radio. What made you step away from media and concentrate on the breeding with Rosemont? Yeah, it was um, it was a bit of a, a, a life change uh, decision. Ben, we had um, uh, we had the farm there that my, my wife's family um, had had for plenty of years, and and my um, my father-in-law had sort of semi-retired and built up a, a broodmare band um, that he was um, he was sort of looking to looking to have a muck around with in in semi-retirement and and just have a boutique band of broodmares and unfortunately he he got a brain tumor um in his mid-50s and um it took him pretty quickly and um we were left with a decision of um what to do with the farm and what direction to take the farm i was uh working at channel nine at the time and had a young family and and uh had done 13 years of of uh commuting from geelong from the farm to to melbourne for my my media career and um, I sort of thought, well, you know, I could do that for the next 20 or 30 years and be quite happy to, to be a media a media participant and, and um, be a journo and, and sports presenter. But uh, I thought, well, the challenge of having my own business and, and doing something that I was passionate about, I loved racing and had always um, had always enjoyed the, the thrill of racing horses and, and was intrigued by the, the notion of breeding them. Um, so we, uh, we, we, we packed up the packed up the microphone and the suit and tie and uh, and rolled up the sleeves and got into breeding horses. So um, that was that was pretty well the reason for it. And um, I've I've uh, I've been too busy to, to to reflect on whether that was a good decision or a bad decision. But uh, the great thing about media is you can still do part time stuff and 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 float into it uh, when you get the opportunity. And um, I've still done bits and pieces with Channel Nine and radio stations and. Um, still do a podcast with Peter Moody at the moment and um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, an industry that you can you know have a, have a little bit bit of a bet each way so uh, I, I enjoy that. And you talk about bet each way Anthony um, where does your love and interest of racing come from what's like your earliest memory? Yeah it's, uh, it's, it's sort of born out of uh, the punt like most people um, my, my my father uh, was a was was a very keen punter, not a very successful one, but uh, very keen. I followed in his footsteps. I'm not not being successful, but uh, um, I, I love it and and have since uh, since uh, uh, Melbourne Cup day when uh, Gurners Lane knocked over Kingston Town. Uh, Dad Dad gave us a dollar each way to you know two, two bucks to have a dollar each way on one, and I I, I couldn't split Gurners Lane and Kingston Town, and I, I'd done the form for for the best part of two days leading up to the cup, trying to find the winner. And I said to dad, I just can't split these two. I, and he, he, he taught me about a Quinella. So I had, uh, instead of instead of a dollar each way, I had $2 on the Quinella. I think it paid $12. I got $24 back for my money. And uh, a, a, a victim of the punt was born and bred. So um, it's, 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 I think most people's story starts with a bet somewhere, doesn't it, when, it, when you're talking about uh, racehorses. So um, I've been uh, an avid follower and, and reader and studier of the form guide ever since. And when you were younger and just doing your media career, it must have been a thrill to be able to go, wow, I'm here in the mounting yard seeing all this amazing horse flesh and I'm being paid to talk about it when you were doing the TV. Yeah. Yeah, look, it, 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 there are times where you certainly pinch yourself. I mean, um, you, and you've got to remind yourself and slap yourself a few times and and uh, and say, well, you know, yeah, okay, you might be having a bad day at work, but at least you're at the races or the football or the cricket. Um, so um, they're they you know, and and when you get to get up close and personal with um, horses like Black Caviar and uh, Wink, 
Ernst and McCarthy Diva um, uh, going back through the through my time in journalism. It was uh, it's quite amazing, you know. And probably the one that stands out for mine is Black Caviar. You know, she was such a such a dominant force and undefeated and and uh, you know revered by all at the time. And 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 to think you could you could stand there at the uh, you know at the at the number one. Um, Saddling enclosure when they came back to scale after she won all those races, and you could be standing there with your camera crew and and be first on the scene with uh, Peter Moody and Luke Nolan and and give her a pat on the nose. It was um, quite unbelievable stuff, and it's moments like that that I'll um, I'll always cherish through my my journalism days, Ben. And um, can you describe it a day in the life of um, Anthony Miffin, the principal of Rosemont Stud? It's obviously pretty long days working at the stud and the spelling farm and also going to see Mark Young, who does your pre-training as well. Yeah, look, um, it's funny. No, no day is the same. And, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky now that uh, I've got a really good team of people in place. You know, that once upon a time, I, I was... I tried to be the, the the jack of all trades, and and uh, you know would get involved in 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 yearling prep, and would walk the yearlings, and you know if there, there was a time there where I did all the foaling down back at Rosemont. Lots, lots of people wouldn't uh, wouldn't know that they sort of see me as a, a journo and a, and more of a a business owner that sort of sits sits over the top of uh, of the business, and and um, you know. Um, I suppose runs things from an office, but um, there was a time where I educated myself up and I made mistakes and I I did all those things because I wanted to learn and I wanted to know what the job entailed, um, you know, so I could go out and source the very best people to do that job for us as we as we grew in 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 size and and um, and scale, I suppose. So um, nowadays, I, you know, it, it it is a case of just being a support mechanism for those those people like Jared Jones, who's our stud manager at the farm, and um, and Hannah, who runs our our spelling farm, and Mark Young, as you mentioned, with the with the pre-training facility, and um, you know, I wander through the yearling barn today and catch up with Karen Sinclair, who's who's done an amazing job as our yearling manager um, over over the course of the last four or five years, um, and taken us to the next level. You know, we sold our first million dollar yearling last year, and 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 the next day we turned up and and nearly did it again, sold one for nine seventy five at Magic Millions, and. It was, uh, you know, it was that that was an awesome experience, and um, you know, it's it's a matter of giving those guys support and making sure I'm staying in touch with them and making decisions on a daily basis as to, you know, what what needs to be done to to best fix a, a problem that we might have or best take us into the future. So, um, at the moment, my my focus is is pretty much on those. Magic Millions horses and, and getting uh, eyeballs across them and being in touch with the agents and the owners and the trainers to get them through the farm to have a look at uh, the Magic Millions draft uh, before we get up to the Gold Coast because it'll be a busy time up there with 1,100 yearlings for everyone to get through. So the more on-farm parades we can do, the, the better off we're placed. So um, there's a bit of focus on that at the moment. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's it's a, it's, it's a varied existence, which uh, my, my attention span's not long, Ben, so I need, uh, I need a different challenge every day and, and something different to think about. So um, it's, uh, it, it's good fun and it's, um, it's something I'm passionate about and, uh, you know, jump out of bed and think, uh, what are we doing today and how can we make Rosemont uh, a, a better organisation today? That's, that's, that's my mission. Thrill, Anthony, to see the um, red colours with the white gate crusher go across the line first in the Geelong Cup a number of years ago. Obviously, all your staff were there, and also the wider Geelong region. To see a local horse win their big cup must have been pretty special. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was a massive day. Um, I think. Yeah, you know, we only we were, we were pretty close to the Quinella or the Daily Double, weren't we? With Runaway, the local winning and. Uh, and and you getting fashions on the field, Benny? Or, or you were pretty close. You looked pretty sharp that day. Thanks very much, man. I'm not sure. I can't remember how I went that day. I don't think it even got past me. I was more thrilled for you to see you guys win the Geelong <laughs> Cup, and you ended up running in the Melbourne Cup too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have you might have been a bit uh, rattled with uh, with the with the Rosemont victory, and uh, and and had the had the tie a bit skew if and and missed out on a placing. But uh, yeah, it was a. Uh, it was an awesome. It was an awesome experience to to have a horse that we bred off the farm. Um, you know, as Gay Woodhouse jumped in and we we presented it a yearling sale, sold seventy five percent. We kept a quarter and um, to to uh, have him go around in the in just to have him go around in the Geelong Cup, our our local cup, and you know a local a local bred horse go around um, was was significant in itself. Given that my business partner in Rosemont Stud, Nigel Austin, uh, he owns. Um, Cotton On, uh, founder of Cotton On 
clothing and uh, has built that into a worldwide Goliath of, of the, the retail industry. And um, he, he's very passionate about his racing. He's passionate about Rosemont and um, passionate about his horses. And um, it was it was just so exciting to have a runner. And, and then when he, when he skipped clear on straightening, uh, Stevie Baster uh, got down and got busy and, and uh, we, we, we kept on going further in front. It was... Um, uh, it was it was yeah it was it was really emotional actually and go back with the cup for Nige to go back with the gold cup uh, into his marquee and and uh, and show the thousand people that he'd invited along uh, for their Christmas party they had their Christmas party at the Geelong Cup uh, the head office staff and and there's a thousand of them there on the dance floor and to march back in with the gold cup it was something pretty special and um, Stevie Baster couldn't wait to get uh, his last ride out of the out of the way and and get down there and we hoisted him up on shoulders and. Uh, spent the night uh, on the dance floor, um, you know, I- enjoying what was a, a significant success. So, um, you know, and then obviously to, we, I think we were one of only two Australian bred horses uh, in the Melbourne Cup uh, a couple of weeks later, um, you know, to come off little old Rosemont start at the back box at Geelong was, was pretty significant. So, um, no, it's, it, it was, it was one of the, you know, one of the memories, I think, when I'm, when I'm, um, old and grey, and uh, and and sitting in the rocking chair uh, on the front porch, I'll, I'll uh, my mind will go back to the 2018 Geelong Cup with uh, fond memories. You talk about getting ready for the Magic Millions. Which um, of your lots in particular has attracted the most interest? Which one do you reckon will be your your sale topper? Uh, nice draft, Ben. It's um, it's a um, it's a significant um, uh, lot of horses. To be honest, uh, it's it, we run really deep into the draft in terms of uh, our quality. Um, there's a there's a magnificent uh, Frankel Colt um, that uh, you'll you'll love him when you see him. Um, he's out of a out of a street cry mare who's a half sister to the mother of Kementari. Um, he's a he's a real showstopper on type and and obviously a collector's item given uh, given the job that Frankel's doing. Um, not sure that people are quite aware um, in this neck of the woods. Um, I, I can I can take you off uh, here. Here's my, my, my the, the brains trust over here. There's Karen, the yearly manager. She's uh, she's working at Magic and Troy, the maintenance manager. Um, doing a good job. In fact, I, I could probably um, do a little treat here, Ben, and uh, wander through the yearling barn now that I've. Made it from one to wow, the other. Awesome. And, uh, um, uh, we've got uh, Toronado over there. Here he is. Uh, so he's our our uh, our big time colt. But I think there's going to be uh, plenty of plenty oh, of activity wow. on this bloke. Um, yeah. He's out of a mare called Turnaval, um, yep. and uh, he's doing exceptionally well uh, through the preparation. And um, he's going to be a, a really exciting horse for us to. To present in uh, uh, just a month's time now, so um, he's a lovely horse. Um, we we bought the mare up there in Europe and um, bred him uh, bred her to Frankel uh, Southern Hemisphere time, and um, it's a long process, but uh, hopefully one that we get the reward out of you uh, know in a in a few weeks time. So um, yeah, he, he'll he'll certainly be a be one of the star colts. Um, there's an I'm Invincible colt in the in the in the barn next door. Um, he's doing really well out of Tani Dancer. You might remember Tani Dancer, yep. race for Clint McDonald uh, yep. out of Caulfield. Um, and he's a beautiful horse, got a lovely head on him. And um, he's, uh, he's, he's something that we're pretty excited about. And Titan Blinders won the last race on Ballarat Cup Day. Here's yep. his half brother by So You Think. So, okay. um, yeah, he's a, he's a lovely horse and, and yeah. big, big, strong, uh, good boned horse that um, looks like he might. Um, might be sort of a derby horse, perhaps, which uh, it's a bit unusual wow. to take up the Magic Millions, but um, um, I, I just think a nice horse sells really well up there at the Gold Coast, and they do such a good job, the Magic Millions company. So, um, yeah, excited with our Magic Millions draft, and there's a bit of a sneak peek for you. You didn't expect that, did you, Benny? No, thanks very much for that, and I'm sure our listeners and viewers would have thoroughly enjoyed that too. Also, um, what is your biggest thrill in racing as a breeder? Uh, look, I think my biggest thrill um, has to be Mr. Quickie uh, and what he's been able to do for us. Um, you know, we've won Group 1 races um, with horses that we've bought um, uh, and bought into and stallion prospects, and um, we've enjoyed that immensely. But to win a Group 1 race with a horse that you've bred off the farm, 
uh, presented, got a good team of people together. Uh, Wiley Dalziel and his team came in on the horse. Um, we, we kept a good chunk of him and to go up and win that Queensland derby was something very, very special. Uh, I think I turned to my wife, uh, we were standing in the mounting yard watching them hit the, hit the line. And we were we were yelling and screaming and 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 hugging each other and and uh, and I, the first words I could utter utter to her were, and we bred the horse as well. And I and I still remember afterwards. I thought, what a strange thing to say, but it was it was probably the you know, that, that that the thrill of having bred a Group One winner and still part owning him um, was was something really special. So um, Nige couldn't be there on that day, which was a, a bit of a regret. But um, thankfully, bobbed up this spring and won the Turak, and we couldn't be on track because of COVID. But we were together uh, to watch him uh, win the Turak, and and that was a that was a massive thrill as well. Well, so Mr. Quickie's given us some some great times, and um, hopefully he's got a, a big autumn in store. And uh, I'll put a pitch in there now for all your your uh, your followers, Ben, and I might get you on the bandwagon if I can for Mr. Quickie for the All Star Mile. We want to have another crack at it, and uh, we, we we tried to win it first up with him um, uh, the, earlier this year. It, which um, came unstuck. Um, we might just give him a run this time in and, and see if we can win it second or third up. But uh, yeah, I reckon he's going to make uh, make make for a lovely miler going forward. He's a gelding, so we get to race him for a few more years. And um, yeah, certainly you can probably hear the passion I've got for Mr. Quickie and the team. He's uh, he's been a pretty special horse for us. And just a bit of footy, a um, bit of bit of footy stuff now too. Um, you were on the Richmond Football Club board for a time. Did that change your? perception of um, football or sport in general, having covered it from the other side in the media? Uh, yeah, it did a bit. Um, I, I, it's, a, I, I, it's, a, it's an interesting question I, that I don't get asked much, but um, uh, it's quite funny when, when, you, when you're in media and you're looking at uh, AFL football teams and, and professional sporting codes so closely and, and you see the, the professionalism of them and, and, and the way they run and, and the appearance of them from a media perspective. Um, it's really interesting to see um, up close, they're no different to your local footy club. You know, ultimately they're about trying to win footy games and trying to, you know, make sure they've got enough money in the in the bank to pay their players. And um, whether you're pay, paying that player a million bucks or or ten thousand a year, um, as you do in a local footy club, um, it's it's all the same. The, the numbers are just different. So I, I remember sitting at my first few board meetings thinking this is no different to my local club, St Joey's in Geelong, that I was involved with and grew up around and and helped them out. Uh, in a in a in a um, off field sense uh, here and there when when asked and um, I remember I remember thinking to myself this is really interesting that it's a professional football club that's revered by you know uh, half a million uh, uh, footy fans um, around Australia barrack for Richmond and a hundred thousand members but it's no different to the local footy club and the struggles that are that are that are posed to a local footy club to just keep um, keep paddling as fast as you can to try and win a game of footy so. Um, you know, you, you, you've got to bear that in mind sometimes when we're critical of our footy teams and we think that they don't get it right all the time. Well, everyone's trying their best and, and for the common cause. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting concept. So I was very privileged to spend six years on the Richmond board and see that up close and personal and see how many good people um, work as hard as they can to try and get you the four points on a Saturday. And you must enjoy watching your daughter, Lily. She's making her way with Melbourne in the AFLW. And I believe there's a family connection to the Demons as well. Yeah, yeah. She's done us really proud over the first uh, the first four years of AFLW. She was drafted in that first year to Melbourne. And um, we were delighted that she went to Melbourne uh, at the time. Uh, as you mentioned, um, there is a family connection. My, my father's first cousin is Laurie Mitten, who was uh, a superstar in the 50s and 60s. Um, he won four best and fairest, I think, from memory, uh, five or six premierships. He won best and fairest in premiership years, which um, I, I was lucky enough to have lunch with Dennis Pagan and, and Kevin Sheedy last week. And Kevin Kevin was – he spent half the lunch talking about Laurie Mitten and how much he loved him growing up and how good a footballer he was. And he'd go to he'd go and watch Melbourne play just to, just to watch uh, Laurie Mitten. So – um, he was clearly um, a, a, a rare talent. Um, uh, he's still alive, lives up in the in the in the Gold Coast region. Um, haven't had much to do with him. My dad died young, so I, I didn't um, 
didn't have a lot to do with dad's side of the family growing up. But um, we have uh, made contact with each other and he made contact uh, with Lily when she was drafted, which was very nice. So um, there is uh, that that family connection to the Demons. As much as I'd love to see her run around a black and yellow jumper at some stage, uh, there is, um, you know, her, her, her heart beats, uh, beats true for the red and the blue. So um, good luck to good luck to her. She, 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 she barracked pretty hard for the Tigers against the Cats, though, uh, in October this year, which I was pretty proud of. So... Um, yeah, she's she's doing a great job for us and we can't wait for another season of AFLW. Thanks very much for joining us today, Anthony, giving us a bit of an insight into what's required into preparing a yearling before they go through the ring and talking about your media career before you went, went on board with Rosemont. Yep, no, no problems, Ben. Uh, we, we, uh, we all in the industry... Um, uh, love people that are passionate about the industry and um, I don't think there's anyone more passionate passionate than you. So um, anytime, happy to happy to uh, talk to you and, and um, your followers uh, and uh, give you any updates on, on Rosemont when you need. So um, good on you. The, the colours look great on you.